The next thing that we're going to do is integrate a 3D model into the composite. Change from the object menu back to the node bin by clicking on the node bin button to the left of the interface. Under the object tab you will see that there is an import node. If you double click on this import node it will take you to a browser. At the bottom of the interface you can go ahead and click the pop-up to choose the file type. So you could bring in Photoshop files with their layers split out. You could also bring in 3DS files as well as other file formats. The one I want you to choose is FBX. FBX stands for Filmbox and this is basically a universal translation file that works between 3D applications which allows you to move various bits of 3D data. In our list of FBX files you'll see at the bottom there is a file called Thompson underscore bottle dot FBX. If we click on this file you will notice that the 3D model gets loaded into the scene. Now just to show you if I just quickly zoom in you can see that this is a proper 3D model. Now we want to take this model and work with it inside the composite. So the first thing is if you were to take the time bar and scrub backwards and forwards you will notice that that 3D model has no animation associated with the background. So we're going to go ahead and link the data together. Make sure you go back to frame 1 for this operation. Now if your schematic looks a little bit like mine you can see that there are some nodes on screen and some nodes that are off screen. What you need to do is go to the right of the interface and enable the pan button in the navigation controls. When you put the cursor back to the schematic it is now a little hand and you can simply click and drag the view over so that we can now see all the nodes in the schematic. Remember to turn the pan option off which returns the cursor back to its normal function. Now we can see in axis 2 we still have all that animation that we would like to use. So select axis 2 in the schematic and same as before we drag a connection out of axis 2 and you connect it to the axis underscore bottle node. That is the top animation controller of the 3D geometry we brought in. You'll notice how the bottle has simply popped in the scene but if we now scrub the time bar backwards and forwards you can see that it's already picked up the animation that was created from the original track. Now once again go back to frame 1. What we now want to do is we now want to position the bottle in the scene to replace the first bottle which is closest to the camera. What you can do is you can select the axis controller called axis underscore bottle and it turns itself on as an axis in the view. You can either adjust this axis simply by dragging the values in the menu or you can click and drag the axis and freehandedly position it in the scene. In this case I'm going to position it over the original bottle inside the shot. Once again if you scrub the time bar backwards and forwards you can see that it is taking on the animation of the scene. Once again once you have finished scrubbing simply return back to frame 1. Now by adding this into the scene there's a few things that need to be addressed in the shot. The first thing is the color correction. So we're going to do a very basic adjustment. The most obvious thing we will change is the color of the label. Now since these other bottles in the scene have already got a grade on them we can simply copy that color. In order to do this looking at the geometry structure in the schematic you can see we have our main geometry and then we've got a color for the material of the bottle for the bottle top and then the middle column is the actual material for the label. You will see there's a node labeled material and if you double click on this it will bring up the object menu for that particular node. You will see in the middle of the interface there is a tab labeled material 2 and under material 2 you see there's the diffuse controls with a color pot which is white. If you click on that color pot it brings up the color picking tools and choose the pick option to bring up the eyedropper. Now what we'll do is with this eyedropper simply go over to the other bottles inside the composite and click on the labels. You can see as I click and drag I can then choose the color of the label that I'd like it to be. You can see it's now applied it to the label of my 3D model. To commit this color simply come back to the color box we have and click on the new color to commit it into the diffuse value. We have now got this better integrated into the scene. You can spend as much time as you like grading the object but for our purposes we're just going to grade the label just to match it in better. 
Now the final thing that we're going to do in the scene here is in order for us to integrate this properly, you can see that all the other bottles are being held by this bottle holder. Now obviously because we've added the 3D model into the scene, the bottle holder now exists behind the 3D model. So we need to recomposite this back into the shot. One of the techniques would be to take the background and rotoscope or cut out a bottle holder to recomposite on top of the 3D model. Now we've already made one, so let's go ahead and load it into the composite. Go to the left hand side of the interface and switch from the object menu to the media menu. You can see there's a button that says new media. If we click on it once, it will then take us back out to the desktop. With the red cursor, go to the background clip and click on the time code on the top left hand corner. When you click once, the cursor now turns blue and is now waiting for you to load the alpha or matte. The clip labeled background matte is the one we're going to use. Once again, click on the top left hand corner by the time code to load it into the action composite. If you have a look at the bottle, you can now see how the bottle holder is now around the 3D model. If you were to click and drag the time bar, you can see how it's now nicely integrated into the shot. Now since this is a 3D scene, we can look at it from all different angles. Let's go ahead and have a look how it sits in 3D space. We only now need to work with one view, so if you select the result view on the right hand side of the interface and press ALT 1, this will return us back to a single view mode. Now you'll notice on the right hand side of the interface there is a blue button labeled move. The cursor has been in move mode this entire time. If you click on this move button to call up the pop-up, you will find that there are a lot of commands but in the middle of the interface you will see the orbit command. If you release the pen, the cursor now turns into an arrow and we can simply click and drag on the screen till we look at the angle of the actual composite. You will see how we've got our 3D bottle integrated with the rest of our scene. Now what we want to do to finish this off is we would like to go ahead and reset the camera back to its default position. So what we'll do is switch from the media menu back to the object menu. You will see that there is a tab called default cam. Click on default cam and press the reset button at the bottom of the interface. This will reset the camera back to its default positioning. In order for us to render, what we're going to do is we're going to push up the quality of the 3D geometry by increasing its anti-aliasing. To do this, we need to go to the setup menu. So to the left hand side of the interface, press the setup button and this will take you to the rendering preferences. In the rendering tab, you will see in the middle of the interface the anti-aliasing options. At the very bottom where it says hardware AA, switch it from no hardware anti-aliasing to four times the anti-aliasing. The same thing can be done for the software anti-aliasing. Change the option from one sample up to four samples. Before we process, we always need to ensure that we're on frame one. The reason for this is the processing always starts from the frame you're at. So if you're in the middle of the composition, it will process from that point. So always return back to frame one. Once all these things have been met, you can go to the left hand side of the interface where you will see the process button. If you press the process button, Smoke will begin the process of building the composite and rendering a final version. Now you can run Smoke on a host of platforms. Please refer to the Autodesk Smoke website for the latest hardware requirements. The performances will vary depending on your system, your graphics card as well as the media storage. Let's have one last look at the final result in the full screen player. So after the render is completed, you will see that a player button has appeared to the left of the interface. When you click this button, it will bring you into the player. If you do not see the full screen player and just the standard player, simply go to the left of the interface and you'll see the source area layout button. You can click on the standard option and set that to full screen. We then just have to hit the play button and we can then see our final result. This concludes the hands-on sessions, but if you would like to try Smoke for yourself, you can download the 30-day trial version of Smoke at www.autodesk.com smokeformac. As a final reminder, 
If you want to see Smoke in much more detail, as well as the vast toolset that Smoke has to offer, please view the other available content from the on demand presentations, training tutorials, and blogs which can be found on the Autodesk Smoke community website at area.autodesk.com slash smoke. I hope that you've enjoyed this hands-on training session and thank you for watching.